Hey everyone, it's Tyler, the Antenna Man. Most of you are probably aware of the ATSC 3.0 TV standard, also known as Next Gen TV. It's a new over-the-air TV standard that's slowly taking off in the United States and will likely replace the current ATSC 1.0 standard that most of us use to pick up over-the-air TV broadcasts with an antenna. How come the standard went from 1.0 to 3.0? Whatever happened to ATSC 2.0? Stay tuned to find out. If you're a cord cutter or into antennas, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. My YouTube channel is dedicated to the cord cutting antenna community. I'm constantly posting new videos on reception tips, antenna reviews, and so much more. So I recall right after the digital transition of 2009, I noticed that viewing over-the-air TV on the go was pretty much non-existent. Sure, I had a 3.5-inch battery-powered RCA TV that worked in a very strong signal area, but it was nothing like the analog days when you could pick up a signal nearly anywhere. In the early 2010s, I followed news articles about some new over-the-air TV standards, ATSC 2.0 and ATSC MH. I have to give a lot of credit to TV News Check and TVTechnology.com. Both websites did a great job covering the TV standards and still do to this day with the expansion of ATSC 3.0. I included links to several articles referenced in the video in the description. ATSC 2.0 was mainly for on-demand viewing and paid mobile TV services like the now defunct MediaFlow TV service. ATSC MH was better for local TV stations to broadcast to mobile devices. Both standards were backwards compatible with ATSC 1.0. ATSC MH seemed to gain more traction than ATSC 2.0. By 2011, over 70 TV stations launched ATSC MH alongside their ATSC 1.0 broadcasts. What's ironic is that the TV News Check article had a list of TV stations that were supposed to launch the new ATSC MH standard by the end of 2021. It kind of reminds me of what we've seen with the launch of ATSC 3.0. For example, the Philadelphia market was supposed to launch 3.0 back in 2019, but still hasn't. I feel like it's in a never ending stage of coming this year. So I briefly and quickly explain these two TV standards, ATSC 2.0 and ATSC MH. Whatever happened to them? They both flopped for a few valid reasons. First, there weren't really any tuners available for the consumer. Even though some TV stations had ATSC MH broadcasts on the air, what did it matter if no one could watch them? If a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? The lack of consumer tuners was really bad. I remember searching for tuners every week online so I could test out the new standard, years before I even had a YouTube channel. The most I found was this car-enabled tuner, which had to be hardwired internally, and even then it could only output standard definition to an external monitor. The other and main reason why ATSC 2.0 and ATSC MH flopped was because the benefits of both standards and more were available with the new ATSC 3.0 standard. Even better, ATSC 3.0 was built to allow future upgrades, so if more efficient video and audio codecs are developed, they can be implemented into the existing standard and we don't have to repeat this process of replacing TV standards every 10 years. As far as reception goes, ATSC 3.0 is a lot more robust and DTS rules were changed that will improve reception for millions. It's very hard for local TV broadcasters to set up repeaters in low signal areas right now because there's no available channels left after the FCC sold UHF channels 38 through 51 to cell phone companies. I'll keep bringing this up. It was a bad move and really screwed things up for broadcasters. However, with ATSC 3.0, broadcasters can set up repeaters in their coverage area on the same RF channel as their main signal without interference as shown in this NN Tech diagram. The only disadvantage is that ATSC 3.0 is not backwards compatible with 1.0, meaning most TV sets and DVRs used today will need to be upgraded in order to continue picking up over-the-air TV broadcasts once ATSC 3.0 replaces ATSC 1.0. 
We are still at least 10 years away from this point, which I explained in a previous video of mine attached in the description of the video. So ATSC 2.0 was a thing, along with ATSC MH, but both were replaced with ATSC 3.0 before either standard really gained any traction. I think this is better for the long term, even if it means upgrades are needed on the consumer side. For now, there is very little reason to upgrade to an ATSC 3.0 tuner unless you're in a heavily wooded area with reception problems and you can verify that there are 3.0 broadcasts on the air in your market. Make sure to watch my ATSC 3.0 video playlist in the description of the video to get all the details you need. Thanks to TVNewsCheck.com and TVTechnology.com for covering the rise and fall of these two flop TV standards. An additional thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon or is a member of my YouTube channel. If my videos have helped you cut the cord or if you just think they're cool and would like to support them while gaining exclusive perks, such as behind the scenes content, access to my videos ad free one day early, and direct contact with me, visit patreon.com forward slash antennaman or click the join button in this video. If you're on Facebook, you can like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antennamanpa. If you're not on Facebook and would like to receive email updates whenever I post new videos, feel free to sign up to my email list. I attach a link in the description of the video. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more cord cutting and time related videos and have an awesome day.